For this video, we're going to focus on logistic regression. Now, why would we use logistic regression? Well, if you have used much with epidemiology or done much in the, the, this field, you'll know that there's a lot of outcomes that are like yes, no outcomes. Like you're sick or you're not, or they died or they didn't, or they smoke or they don't smoke. So when you've got those kinds of outcomes that you might be trying to predict or trying to identify uh, underlying risk factors for those, you might want to use logistic regression. So before going too far into this, you may want to watch some of the videos that I've got about how to interpret odds ratios that may help you understand why we do what we're going to do here. So assuming you understand how to interpret odds ratios and assuming that you understand a little bit about why we would use logistic regression, we're going to go ahead and start. Now, you will want to install this package, install.packages, parentheses, quotation, epi, capital D, display. Once all of that runs and you get all your red text, then you'll want to do library, parentheses, epi, display. And then you'll be able to do what we're going to do. Now, we've done all that. This is only going to be used if your outcome variable is dichotomous or is binary. And generally speaking, the coding system that I use, that our studio uses, that I think SAS uses, that I know Stata uses, we tend to view things as zero being no and one being yes. So that binary coding system is important here for our outcome. And if our outcome could be, did they get sick or not? We'll do a few examples, but in this case, we'll do uh, have they used e-cigarettes in the last 30 days or not. So we'll start this off by giving our own uh, model name and we can call it, um, you know, e-cig model. We can call it whatever we want, e-cig model, and then arrow, and we'll say GLM, okay, GLM, parentheses, and then the first thing we put in that parentheses is what are we trying to predict or what are we trying to explain? And in this example, we're gonna do e-cig underscore 30 days. We're gonna try to predict why might somebody have used an e-cigarette in the last 30 days. Okay, we're gonna do a single, a, a single like a simple logistic model here first. So after your y variable, to start your x's, we put that squiggly line. So this is um, squiggly line. Now, maybe it's gender. And if your gender is coded as male, female, and words, that might be a problem. Uh, but if it's coded as zero and one, you don't have to do anything. Um, so there's female. If it's coded as zero and one, you don't have to do anything. If it's coded at zero, one, two, three, four, then you're gonna wanna make it a factor level variable. Zero and one it knows is factor level. But if it's not zero and one, if it's, you know, one, two, three, four, or 2014 versus 2018, it's going to treat that as a continuous variable. And you may not want to use it that way. So in this case, we do have female coded as right there, lowercase female coded as zero and one. And when I do that, um, if I do it this way, it's still thinking it's a um, probably a linear regression model. So I need to add in comma family equals binomial. Right there. Family equals binomial. In parentheses. So it did something, okay? Now if I type in summary like I may have for my other models for eSig model, it's gonna give me a lot of stuff that is not what I'm as mostly interested in. It looks like it's still trying to read this maybe more like a linear regression model, and I don't like that. We got that epi display package in here for a reason. So after we run our model like this, then you could do logistic.display which is part of this epi display package, right? And then GLM1, 
And now, instead of reading it like potentially like a logit model, maybe, um, it's going to exponentiate the numbers that are in that model to give us our odds ratios. So, and it's not, so I have to do logistic dot display, and then what's the name of our model? The name of our model is eSig model. eSig model. And now when I do that, here's what I get. Female, one verse zero. The odds ratio is 0 0.43. The entire odds ratio is below one. The whole thing is protective or associated with, with less e-cigarette use in the last 30 days. The p-value, since it's entirely below one, is also significant, less than 0 0.05. It's actually really small, it's less than 0 0.001. The p-value for the um, entire model here, I guess, is probably also significant. Um, so those are the things we're mainly interested in right now. So getting those odds ratios, you see them? All right, well, you only got one here for this particular variable. So that's a simple logistic regression if we want to do something more multivariable, we can. I'm going to hit up on this formula to bring up something else. So we've got eSig model is general linear model, eSig last 30 days, squiggly line, female. Now we might want to add something else. Like if we have any other zero one variables, we can add them without having to do anything. So we can do ever ever Greek, like were they ever in a fraternity or a sorority, Greek life, right? I've got a variable in here coded as age, um, like uh, I have one called under 22. So are they 21 or less? And that's all like zero and, and one. So I can do uh, under plus under 22. I've also got a variable in here that tells you whether or not they're from Kentucky or not, uh, or in-state versus out-of-state. So that one's called KY. That's also a 0, 1 variable. All right? And then while all this is in parentheses, here's our predictors. I've got them highlighted there. This is our outcome, our Y variable. These are our Xs. Okay? I'm going to do comma and then the family equals binomial, enter, and I'll call this eSig model two. So it just did something. Now we're gonna do logistic.display, the name of this model is eSig model two, and it's gonna do something. So it, it did something. So what do we get? What did it do? It gives us all this stuff here. And if I maybe redo it, and zoom out, it'll make it look nicer. Okay, so it all fits there now a little nicer for your viewing. And what do we see here? All right, I see female is still significant. Now this may have changed. It was 0 0.43 uh, earlier, it still is. So that hasn't changed in this adjusted model. That initial one, these in this simple model, this is a crude odds ratio. It's just one variable. These, now that we're in a, this is a multivariable model. It's holding all these things kind of together. And here, what do we see? The, these are, a, this is the crude, and then here are the adjusted. So the adjusted odds ratio really didn't change any. So it's giving us the crude and the adjusted odds ratios. You'll see studies report this. The, the crude is just, it ran the model by itself. It did it for us, which is one variable versus that. Here, it's this variable along with all the other variables. So this is the adjusted odds ratio. This is the Evergreek versus eSig only for crude odds ratio, but then when it looks at all the other factors, here's the adjusted odds ratio. All right, so what do these numbers mean? So I encourage you to watch those other videos if what I'm about to say goes by too quick. But 
This says that being female is protective here. If you're a female, your odds of using an e-cigarette are 1 minus 0 0.43. So that's 57, 57%, 0.57, 57%. Your odds of being an e-cigarette user are 57% lower if you're a female in this model, all right? Furthermore, if you've ever been in a fraternity or sorority, your odds of being an e-cigarette user are 2.36 times greater than those who were not. Or another way of saying it is 2.36 minus 1 is 136% higher. So those in a fraternity or sorority have 136% higher odds of having used e-cigarettes in the last 30 days than those not in a fraternity or sorority. All right, our crude odds ratio for under 22 crossed the magic number of one. So that would have been a fairly insignificant, then probably a little more than 0 0.05. And we can check that here in a second. But the adjusted odds ratio is right there. The whole thing, the whole thing is over one. It's 1.12 on the low estimate. The high estimate is 3.06. The actual estimate for this model is 1.85, which would mean that we would say that there was a statistically significant um, increase in the likelihood of being an e-cigarette user in the last 30 days if you were under 22 compared to if you were older tw than 22. So the people that are 21 or less have an 85% increased odds of being an e-cigarette user. All right, what about being from Kentucky versus not being from Kentucky at EKU in this kind of study? So the students that are from Kentucky actually had um, a lower odds of being an e-cigarette user. So it's protective here. They had a 42%. So one minus, so that percent difference is how far away from one you are. So here we're 42% below one. One minus 0 0.58 is 0 0.42. So 0 0.42 is 42%. So we have a 42% reduced odds of being an e-cigarette user in the last 30 days if you're from Kentucky compared to those who are from out of state. So it could be that out of state students at EKU tend to be engaged in more riskier behaviors or it could be out of state users have more money and they're willing to spend the extra money there. I don't know the reason. Or Kentuckians at the time of this study in 2018 versus in 2014 may have been more loyal to cigarettes since they're, they were so much cheaper in Kentucky, whereas in other states, the price point between cigarettes and vaping, cigarettes came up a lot and vaping didn't start getting taxed a lot. So it could be out of state users may be more likely to use them. I don't know the underlying reason, but Kentuckians were less likely. So this is some model output. Now we haven't assessed the, the total quality of the model yet, but Overall, all the terms in this model, all the adjusted odds ratios, none of them cross one, which means all the p-values here are significant. Now, these are all categorical variables. So if you were to do this model again, we'll call this one e-sig model three, we may, instead of doing under 22, now you wouldn't want to put two age variables in there. I think up here, I've got another age variable that's their true age, called age. So I'm just gonna do plus age. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run it, and then we're gonna do logistic display on eSig model three, right there, and here we go. So now it's saying age as a continuous variable, and it's significant. Here's the crude odds ratio. At the crude level, it wasn't, you know, but in the adjusted model, it's significant. And you see the p-value is 0 0.037, all right? 0 0.93 is the odds ratio, which means that for every one year older, there is a 7% decreased odds of being an e-cigarette user. It may not be appropriate to use it as a continuous variable. 
maybe better to use it as a categorical, but it knew that that was a continuous variable. All right, so that's just a little bit. Now, we're gonna look at a factor level variable a little differently here, because there's another variable here. We're gonna go ahead and run this eSig model. I'm gonna replace age back to under 22, but we're gonna add in another variable here, and the variable I'm gonna add in is year. So when I do plus year, plus year, it sees 2014, 2018. It sees these as continuous numbers, okay? So I'm gonna do logistic display. I just added year, so I'm gonna do logistic display on this new model, eSig model three. eSig model three, we're gonna run it. I run it, look, you see that year? It's viewing these p-values here for year. It says continuous variable continuous variable. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit and rerun that. All right, so you see this? Year, continuous variable. I'm saying for each extra year, there's a 15% increased odds of being a recent e-cigarette user. Now we have to be careful with that particular continuous variable because we probably don't want to use it as a continuous variable. We got 2014 and 2018. We're going to want to call that a factor level variable. So we may want to create a new variable, right? So let's do year.f. That's the one we're going to create. And I'm going to say factor parentheses year. Okay. So now I just created a factor level variable. Now, when I go back to my model, I'm going to create a new model. We'll call this one, um, you know, eSig model four. And I'm going to replace this year with year dot F year dot F. Okay. Now when we do this model here and we're going to display eSig model four, this new one, I just ran it. We just ran the model. Now it's treating this as a factor level variable. And we see the full model here where it says that the odds of e-cigarette use, and particular attention on the adjusted odds ratios, is 63% higher among those in 2018 compared to those in 2014. That's a much more useful statistic than a treating that like a continuous term. So that's just a little bit to think about. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video here and we'll go into uh, diagnostics about these here in the next video.